today, guys. We are going to be looking at the first five minutes of the game and trying to see what do we need to understand about the early game and what do you maybe not know when you are just starting out or maybe when you're, you've played a few games and you're still mostly lost. <laughs> so today we're going to look at a game between Puppy Paw and Louis. If I press view replay, I really hope it goes in and I don't just bug out because, nah. So we're just going to go over their movements so you can see a pretty standard matchup, French versus English. I think this is one of the more common matchups we've seen early on in the game, but now it's mostly English versus English. So firstly, we want to look at the, the matchup. So when you choose a civilization, at low ranks, it doesn't really matter what you choose against what, because everything can beat everything. At higher ranks, the matchup becomes a little bit more important. Now, let's quickly go to caster mode so we can see what he's doing. All right, so you see, Instantly, Puppy Paw takes all his villagers. Let me just go slower. So Puppy Paw instantly took all his villagers and put it on sheep because he wanted to then click one, one, one away to do other things. So as French, as we can see here, he leaves three on food, he uses one for the mill, and he sends two to the gold. So this is not a build order video, so you don't need to understand it too intensely, but every civilization has different amounts of villages that you want to put in different places. And it's just easier to grab six at the beginning. Now we're going to see Louis. He's going to get seven villagers. Let's speed this up. He's going to get seven villagers on food. And then the next thing he's going to do, he's going to rally the next villager onto gold. Where's his gold? There's his gold. Because his English... Okay, never mind. He made his house here. I was a little bit confused there. This is usually... This is quite unusual. Let's quickly just switch over here. To take one from food to build a house. This is not super efficient from what I know, you would rather take your villager that you're rallying all the way to gold to build a house right next to it. But again, not an English build order. So these guys are building, like, as you can see, Puppy Paw building his house close by. This is something that anyone can do because he's not making, he's not building the house over here because this means the villager needs to run all the way here and run all the way back. Mining camp, something very important for those silver and under next to the minerals don't try to capitalize don't put a mining camp between two and think oh i'm gonna save 50 wood no you want to make sure that you get the right amount of resources that you can age up the most efficiently now we're going to see here the puppy ball is now seven on on food three on gold and that's exactly what louis is also going to have and this is what most civilizations have so if you're playing everything and you can't remember all the stuff just do the 7-3 split. The 7-3 split is probably the safest split for most people who are trash, like me. <laughs> now, we see that they both built only one house. Very important. Don't build two houses. You're going to need that wood. So you see, Puppy Paw now is on 15 wood, which is not really enough for anything else that he needs to build. But with English, you always have a little bit of extra wood. So he will be able to make a lumber camp. Now, when you play a civilization where your wood runs out, you will go for the trees right next to you. You just make sure that you chop down these trees. So let's quickly look at what they've decided up until now. So he's, both of them, as you can see, these resources are going up more or less at the same time. Here, we see that Louis is ready to age up. The moment he has 400, 200, he ages up. So he ages up with three villages. You can age up with three or four, depending on what rank you're at and how fast you want to age up but don't send all your villages keep your food villages on food as you can see he took one from food but he took three and put them on here and now you can see he's also going on wood on this side though we can also see that puppy paw is aging up now with the school of cavalry as french does but you can see he's aging up with five five is fine the reason he's doing it with five as well is because he wants to get knights out. French is a very aggressive civ, especially in feudal age. So you need to make sure that you get a lot of damage done early on. Because the knights do fall off once the other civilization gets spearmen. But again, not a guide order. I just want to explain what they're doing. Again, you see he leaves these three on gold. He leaves the three on gold because French needs to use or to get knights. Louis, on the other hand, leaves three on gold, not because of getting knights or any units that require gold, but he's most likely going to get upgrades. 
So you can see he's getting wheelbarrow right now. So he's getting an upgrade because we had the resources. If you accidentally overmine, if you accidentally get too much gold, you didn't move your villages in time, go get an upgrade. This one is 50 gold. Get an upgrade here. This one is 100 gold. You know, it, if you are going to get raided, you might as well get textiles, you know, get something. But we can see Puppy Paul also went for wheelbarrow. So he got that extra gold and he delayed his age up just so that he can get wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow is something that makes your villagers run faster and carry more resources, which is quite important if you're going to have to chop away from your base like these guys. They're trying to get the wood now, but he's not sending them to this wood because this wood is further. And that's what these guys are consistently doing without even thinking about it. Now, you can see that Papi Paul is making a knight while Louis is making one longbowman. Now, I want you to notice the split between these resources. Because we're just analyzing the first five minutes, maybe six, we'll see. Five villages are on food here. Now, from what I'm taught, you need seven. But Louis is very, very good at this game. So we will trust his instincts as well. Um, and you can see he's putting 11 on wood. The reason we put 11 on wood is so you can consistently produce these guys. We want to make longbowmen. And you can see that they're doing this thing next to the gold. These little stickies. That is the cue from English. They basically make the sticks so the knights don't come in and stop the gold mining. Because when Poppy Paw sees the gold mining, he's going to be like, Hey, what is this? Are you going for upgrades? Because when English stays on gold, English has two choices. They can either stay on gold, get upgrades, or they take these gold villages and they take them over to stone. So you get your second TC. So this is either going to be a feudal aggression, which Papi Paul has to react to. He has to make sure that he has enough units to deal with this, with the consistent gold that he's mining. Because you can see, he gets another upgrade. He's like, I'm getting upgrades. I'm, I'm going for the economy. On the other side, we see Papi Paul is making a second knight now. And Louis stopped making longbowmen. So he moved two away from the wood. And we'll see why now. Oh, yes, because they're building a barracks. And now we see he's rallying his villagers onto food as well. So he wants to consistently make units. You see, the TC is never idle. The idle, the TC will always make villagers. These guys, he's always going to split them. But one important thing that's very different between them and us is that they don't have unspent resources. Wait, wait, where's the attack? There's the attack. Okay, so now Louis' uh, puppy is going to come in. But let me just slow down. So, resources. All his resources are being spent. He doesn't chop 100 wood too much. When he sees, oh, I have 100 wood, he goes and he makes a military building. Puppy Paw's side, you can see as well, he has 148 now. So that means very soon he's also going to make another military building or just a blacksmith to get upgrades. So consistently get rid of your resources and you'll be fine. Now, you can see these guys have to run quite a far away. So you can even build another lumber camp over here. Every two blocks, it's worth it. Because at low ranks, I know we like to make our villagers run. It's not efficient. Just make another lumber camp. And don't take all of them. Just take like two and make a lumber camp. And we see the knight is going to go in. Because like I said, with French, you need to find early damage. Because knights do fall off if they don't get a lot of damage done. And you can see that knight is taking quite a beating now. And now at the same time, he's sending his knight up top and he's trying to attack two places at the same time. But he turns around the moment he sees these palings because he knows he's going to run into them. His knight is going to get stuck, take a lot of damage, and he might even lose that knight. So he gathers back up and he takes his other knight and he's deciding what to do next. So he might just bring these two together and run through them because two longbows, they're not going to stop two knights. So because of that, we see that Louis is making spearmen. He's making spearmen because he knows he needs to defend against knights. One by one. So now the knights regather and he's like, hey, let me show you what they can do. And now he goes behind the palings and he tries to attack the villagers that way. Now that villager just died. If Louis had this upgrade, this specific one, that villager wouldn't have died. He would have stayed alive because they can take three shots then. So... When you get your upgrades, when you have that extra gold, get the upgrades for based on the civilization you're playing against. If you're playing against an aggressive opponent, you want to get your villagers a little bit tankier, just so that you can withstand it. Now, again, this is not advice for people in Diamond and Up. This is 
just trying to understand what you can and can't do, especially in for us lower ranked people. So the knights got their damage, they got a villager, and they're like, all right, boys, we're, we're heading out. We're going to regroup. And we see this because he's making more knights. So now there's another knight joining the fight, and they're going to take on that spearman. The thing is, spearmen do a lot of damage to them. But with three knights, you can take them on. So he loses his scout, but these three knights will be able to take on the spearman. This guy is a little bit low, and you don't want to take another spear shot, otherwise you'll die. Now, this is where Louis is pretty safe. He now has a few spearmen to defend, and he has two longbows to make the palings. And then, from there on out, it, the game goes on. And that's it for now. Let me just pause the game. And that is the first, apparently, 6 minutes and 45 seconds of a game. So, try to understand what is very important for you. Your mining camp next to the resources. Don't go for stone in the first age. They are only doing it in the second one, because you can't do anything with stone in the first age. The mill, right next to the berries. Don't put it between two berries at all. I know it sounds silly. And then we also see the lumber camp. The moment he chopped through, he, he built another one. The moment he could afford it. And again, they spent all their resources consistently. Another thing that I want to highlight here is Louis is English and their farms are a little bit cheaper. The reason he's going here, he's making farms next to his base, is because he's playing also against French. You need to get a safe food source because these knights, they're horses, they run quite fast. They're just going to raid you. So if his villagers were here on berries when you're playing against French, he's just going to kill all these villagers. And by the time you're like, oh, oh, I'm being attacked, all your villagers are dead. So if you're new, play English. So you can make your farms next to your base. But you need wood for that. That's why there's 11 on here. So that every time he has enough wood, he just moves it directly and makes a farm. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's the, the first five minutes analyzed. Yeah. So let me just go through Twitch chat and see if I missed anything. So I see Sir D Durka says, that's my problem because I feel like I need to stack my resources. Yeah, you don't. You need to use your resources all the time. Should you purchase arrow mail before sending knights as French? No, you can just, the moment you have a knight, you send it out. You just go straight to the base, but you don't take too much damage. Don't run into his TC. Don't lose your knight. Don't be like me. <laughs> they are very tanky, like face said. They can take a beating. So, yeah. Was there any other questions that anyone had? Okay. So now we can clap. 